OK, so a mapping transforms one set of numbers into a different set of numbers. So you take the numbers 3, 7, 11, 15. Take another set of numbers 33, 77, 121 and 165. Then a mapping transforms the numbers on the left, set A, to set B. So in this case the numbers in set A are called the domain and the numbers in set B are called the range. And you need to remember which is which. I always think you fire into a range. So you end up with the numbers in the range. You start with the numbers in the domain. Now a function is a special mapping such that every element in the domain is mapped to exactly one element in the range. So if we take the function uh, fx equals 3x plus 2, with the domain being the set of all real numbers, and that's what that means, it's the x numbers can be any real number, so x belongs to the set of all real numbers, uh, then for every number here, Let's take 4, minus 2, 6, but I can take any real number, they're just three examples. Uh, times by 3 and add 2, I get 14. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, plus 2, minus 4. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 is 20. This is a function, because every element in the domain gets mapped to exactly one element in the range. Let's take the function, the positive square root of x, uh, where x is any real number. Then if I take 9 or 4 or minus 100, then 9 maps onto 3, 4 maps onto 2, but minus 100 doesn't map onto anything, because if we've got the positive square root, then this uh, has no, there's no element to map onto, so it's not a function. However, we can make that into a function by saying fx is root x, and if you change the domain to say that x belongs to uh, the set of all positive real numbers, then every element here, 4, 121, 2, 2, 5, maps on to exactly one element in the range. So this is a function. This this is a function. So by changing the domain, we've changed this, which wasn't a function, into a function here. So just to reiterate, a function maps every element in the domain onto exactly one element in the range. Now it's possible to combine functions into composite functions. So what we're looking here is composite functions which consist of two or more functions put together. So let's take, let's find out what fg of x is. If we look at this, this is where we start. x is going to be the domain. We're going to do g to the numbers in the domain. So g comes first, and then when we've got that, we're going to do f to the answer. So uh, please bear in mind that f g x means do g first. So we're going to do f to g of x, which is x squared plus 1. So g of x is x squared plus 1. So there's g of x, x squared plus 1. Then we're going to do f to the answer. What does f do? It gets whatever you start off with, times it by 3 and add 2. So it's going to be 3 lots of x squared plus 1 plus 2. In other words, it's going to be 3x squared plus 5. gf of x means do it the other way around. Do g to whatever we have uh, when we get f of x. f of x is 3x plus 2. So g to that is going to square what we've got inside the bracket. 
x squared, so we're going to do that and then add 1 to the answer. So it's going to be 9x squared plus um, 12x plus uh, 4. And then we're going to add 1 because gx has an add 1 at the end. So this is going to be uh, 9, squeeze this in, 9x squared plus 12x plus 5. So g f of x is not the same as f g of x. 